on the Xiaomi 31 is basically the same exact model of laptop that is the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. So it's from the same original design manufacturer. However, there are some differences. As you can see to start with, it's only in this champagne gold color. A fingerprint reader, which works really well. Once you set this up, you can get into Windows really quick, faster than typing a password. What you do is just place your finger on, the, on there, unlocks and reads, and go straight into Windows via Windows Hello. A quick and easy SSD slot. So it only requires two screws here. One for the flap on the outside, then one for the SSD itself. So you can insert your own SATA 3 spec 22 by 42 millimeter SSD. And then the biggest difference, this is the Shoma 31 Pro model they call it, which has the Pentium N4200. Now this has a maximum turbo of 2.5 gigahertz, so that is 300 megahertz faster than the typical N3450 you'll find in the EasyBook 3 Pro. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, so that's two gigabytes of RAM less. Now the GPU on it, it's still the same, but it's now labeled as the Intel HD 505, which has six executional cores more on there so it is slightly faster and 50 megahertz more highest turbo speeds on that gpu clock now the keyboard is basically the same as you'll find on the easybook 3 pro however there's a very minor difference here and that where we have the button here to disable the touchpad on the shoma 31 is actually just the scroll lock you'll see here on the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro. That's the only difference. So the keyboard is basically exactly the same. It's not a bad keyboard at all. I find it's good to type on. And we have around 1.24 to 2.5 millimeters or so of key travel and minimal flex here. It is really quite solid. So the touchpad, while it's in gold, it seems to have the same exact accuracy as the one on the EasyBook 3 Pro. So it's not really an improvement at all. It may be slightly more sensitive, but that could be down to drivers or something. So having that Elan fingerprint reader in there has not actually changed the brand of use, which is unfortunate because the touchpad really is a very average touchpad and not a precision one. So we don't have full control of the gestures. Port out is the same. On the left, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack USB 3 port, which will power external hard drives, and then a micro SD card slot. You can see that the micro SDs, they fit in nice and flush. So there's no risk of them popping out inside a bag and you losing that expensive micro SD card. On the right, mini HDMI out, another USB 3 port, DC in for charging, and a status LED. And yes, you guessed it, the same exact matte coated 1080p IPS panel that's in here. So the maximum brightness tops out to be approximately 250 lumens, which isn't bad because it is matte coated. Now, if that was a glossy display, I want a little bit more brightness there. So out of the box, the calibration of the screen does definitely lean towards the cool white. And you can notice that, but using the Intel software, you're able to at least go in there and you can warm up the screen a little bit, just tweak that via the settings in there. So it's not really an issue there. Other than that, the blacks, their deep viewing angles are good. Not a bad panel at all. It's certainly not the best, not quite as good as the Chewy Lapbook 14.1 screen that I looked at, but overall for the price, while well, at least in the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro, it is a very decent screen and very usable thanks to that anti-glare coating. Now it does have dual array microphones here. So when you're talking on Skype and at least not typing on the keyboard, sound quality is all right from those microphones as well as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. No problems with it. It's loud and it's clear. There's no interference. That tends to be a problem that I experienced on the Atoms. But of course, having the microphone so close to the keyboard that if you happen to be typing at the same time, you would get a lot of feedback and you hear that over those microphones. There is a webcam, of course. Now it's two megapixels, 720p, and the quality really is nothing special. It's below average, I would say. If you're in good lighting, it's all right. It does the job, and that's really all you can expect in this price range. So that's the maximum that the screen will recline. Now the hinge of it is quite stiff. There's no problems with it. And the overall build quality is very good. There's no flex in the palm rest. The lid is all made out of this alloy. And there are magnets that hold the lid down closed here. And it is thin and light to around 1.37 kilos. So when I first powered on the Shoma 31, it was in Windows 10 Chinese, and I found absolutely no way like other 
notebooks I've looked at to install English. The language pack installation just would not work. I could not get it to actually download. So I gave up on that and did a backup of the drivers, which you can get from my website, techtablets.com. And I just installed then Windows 10 Home in English and it will activate with the license that's in the BIOS. So no problems there as long as you install Windows 10 Home. So it's a little bit of a hassle. The likes of the Jumper EasyBook 3 Pro have it already in English and various other European languages as well. So that is good on that model and poor on this one. This is really intended only for the Chinese domestic market. So some benchmarks here. This is Geekbench 4. Now you see the single core score is faster by 13% than the Apollo Lake Sauron N3450. That is because this here turbo is up to 2.5 gigahertz and the N3450, you can see the scores, this was the T-Book 4, that has a maximum turbo of 2.2 gigahertz. So that's why we have that difference there. But the multi-core score here isn't really much faster, only about 5%, which is quite poor there. Now the wireless speeds, good speeds, not the fastest I have seen from the Intel 3165 chipset, that's dual band wireless AC. And the range, reasonably good. In fact, just exactly the same I feel as the EasyBook 3 Pro here. Now one positive is that the 64 gigabytes of EMMC storage we get is EMMC 5 spec. So that means it's faster than your 4.5 spec. So a sequential write speed here of 275 megabytes per second is very good. The read, sorry. And then the write of 75 megabytes per second. Again, that's not bad. 4K reads a little low and the writes there perfectly fine for this spec of drive. And this is the Antutu benchmark here. So it's around 13,000 points higher only. And most of that boost as well coming from the higher clocks you get on the CPU. GPU is a little bit better because it does have those six executional cores more on there versus the N3450. And it also is 50 megahertz faster, but not really that much of a difference. Later on in this video, we'll check out gaming and we'll take a look if it really makes a noticeable difference or not there. So here is the battery life. This is a test that I just ran. You're looking at approximately seven hours. Now, if you drop the brightness down of the screen to about 25% internet use, you can probably squeeze about eight hours. So it's very similar to that of the EasyBook 3 Pro with the Celeron N3450. And as I mentioned in the beginning, the charge times are just under three hours to fully charge this 12 volts, three amps. So in real world use here, I've noticed that the Pentium N4200 doesn't really seem to be that much faster, only in benchmarks. That's the only place it's really showing because I'm still able to do the same amount of multitasking. I haven't noticed any speed improvement. So switching between the tabs here in Chrome, so I have, what is it now, about six tabs open here. And that's fast, the scrolling is fast, things are still loading in relatively quick. Now it is not as fast as a Core M3. A lot of people get mistaken and think that it's about the same kind of performance. It's not even as fast as the first generation ones, like the 5Y10. It's still a little bit slower than that and still a step down. But if you do install an SSD, it's certainly going to help with the multitasking. If it is going to be swapping to the SSD, you won't notice it as much as the eMMC. So I've got Edge here in the background. I even have Photoshop here open. So you can do basic minor edits and things like that. But just don't expect to be editing a two hour long 4K video and then coding it on a laptop like this. I mean, it's not designed for that. It's all about battery life. And it is good at that as you've seen before with the battery. So you can run this for a while. And those Chrome's, Chrome tabs there are all very quick to swap over to. So I'm just gonna play now a quick example here of a track here that I always test and we'll have a listen to those speakers. So you can hear from that that the speakers, I mean, they're okay sounding, uh, but they do vibrate a little at 100% volume. You can hear it's just vibrating in the metal chassis there, which isn't great. Now, they aren't top of the line speakers, nor you can expect that for this kind of category of notebook. So Counter-Strike, 800 times 600, lower settings, very disappointing performance. 
I did expect a lot better than this from the N 4200. So it's struggling to get 30 frames per second and nothing like the silver top ear which had the power limits disabled that was getting around 40 to 50 frames per second with the exact same settings. So I'll move on now and check out League of Legends and see how that one performs. League of Legends, as you can see, playable frame rates around 56 frames per second. Now this is 1080p on the very low setting. So that's great. So this one I feel is gonna be perfectly fine. No issues with this. So lighter titles like this one will be playable on this Apollo Lake in 4200. So I'll keep that running in the background and we'll check now on the thermals. I have got HW info here and it has gotten itself up to 72 degrees. Now this has only been running for 14 minutes but I have tested it in the past on this one here and the thermals will not go above 80 degrees and there is no thermal throttling so no problems there at all. The BIOS is completely unlocked so we've got all of the settings there available to us but we don't have control of the power limits. Not that it really matters anymore because we can of course overwrite that now with that memory edit. So I have a pen drive stuck in the USB 3 port which is a Linux Mint. It's 18.2 is the version of it. I'm going to launch it now and see if it will run that okay. All right, so this is as far as it got. It just jams up with this cursor or underscore here on the screen. Now, I do know from experience that on the EasyBook 3 Pro and this model here too as well will run Linux Manjaro seems to boot. So try that distro. You're going to have to really experiment what's different ones and what is going to run, but it should run Linux without a problem. Okay, so end of the day, the Onda Shoma 31 is only faster in benchmarks, and really it is the EasyBook 3 Pro, apart from it's in a gold color, has a fingerprint reader, and that Easy Access SSD flap on the bottom, the slot there. So really, no point to go and get it. Go and get this one, which is the EasyBook 3 Pro, that is still the current king of the Apollo Lake budget laptops, selling for around 229 US. That makes it about 80 to 70 US cheaper than this Shoma 31. So make sure you check out the review of this model. And I do hope to see you back in the channel soon with more up and coming reviews. I do have a few more Apollo Lake machines coming. And the review, of course, of that Cube iWork 5X that I unboxed recently. And possibly the EasyBook 3L Pro in a couple of weeks too that I'll be checking out, which may be better than this model here and could be the best Apollo Lake notebook yet.